Hello there, my name is Joe and welcome to my channel. In this video, I thought we'd take a look at the LoRa Info node in Comfy UI. So to get us started, I thought we'd do a uh, quick overview of my workflow. We'll then have a quick look at um, a couple of LoRa's that we're going to use. And then we will uh, move on and have a quick look at the LoRa info, um, how we download it and add it to our workflow. And then once we've done that, we will um, generate an image using one of the LoRa's and then we'll generate another image using both LoRa's together and see what we get. So uh, let's move on. Okay, so a quick overview of my workflow. Um, we can see here we start off with the standard load checkpoint. I've then added two load LoRa's because um, I'm going to be using two, two LoRa's today. Um, that then feeds into my prompts. I've used a convert to group node to um, link these two prompts together. And I've done the same with my case sampler and empty latent image. I've used the convert to group node to um, join those two together. That then outputs to the VAE V code and then out to an image. And with my images, I've added a prefix of SDXL just to remind me that I'm using the SDXL model today. Okay, so that's all the parts of the text to image and LoRa side. I put them inside a, a group box just so that I can activate and deactivate as and when I want to. And now moving down, I've created another um, group box where I put in the LoRa info nodes that we're, that we're looking at. You'll see here that I've got two of the nodes. And the reason I've done that is because I've got two LoRa's, it just saves me um, running it twice to get the information I want about these LoRa's. It's just as easy for me to um, have the second node. And when I'm not using this, again, I'll just activate or deactivate it as required. So that's my very, very basic workflow. Okay, so next we're going to take a quick look at the uh, LoRa's we're going to be using today. So the first one, both these LoRa's are from Civit AI. So the first LoRa is called Geisha XL. I'll add the URL um, into my comments if you're interested. And um, what you need to do if you want to use this LoRa, so you just come over here and download it. That will download to your downloads area. And from there, you need to copy into your models LoRa's folder. And the other thing that you'll need to do when using a LoRa is you need to check and see if there are any trigger words. Usually they are, but not always. And we can see here that the trigger word for using this LoRa is FFLix-Geisha. Um, Quite difficult word to remember, which is why the um, LoRa info node, I think will be quite useful to us. So yeah, so downloaded this LoRa. I've made a note of the Felix Geisha uh, trigger word, but we'll find that anyway, as we move on. The second um, LoRa we're gonna be using is this one. It's called Colorful Triangles SDXL. And basically, you can see what it does here. It adds colorful triangles to pretty much anything um, except skin. So we'll, uh, we'll be playing with that. And we can see here that the trigger word for that is mad hyphen triangles. And um, perhaps I should have mentioned on the previous um, Laura that both these Laura's are, were built on the base model of SDXL 1.0 which is what we're, we're using today. So these are the two LoRa's. So let's, let's move on. Okay, so coming back to our workflow, let's now take a look at the LoRa info node. So if we have a quick look at it here, um, all it does really is we can click on the LoRa name 
and from there we can select any of the LoRa's that we have installed in our Comfy UI. Once we've done that, then all we need to do is generate the Q prompt and it will provide us information on that LoRa. And in particular, um, it gives us the trigger word or trigger words and the base model that this LoRa was, was built on. And additionally, it will give us, if we scroll down, it will give us some um, example prompts that we can use if we want to do some testing with this particular LoRa. So that's quite handy too. But really the, uh, the, the strength in this particular LoRa is the fact that it gives us the trigger words. We're not having to hunt around to find them. And it's confirming the base model um, that this uh, LoRa was built on. So that's what it is, quite simple but very useful. It certainly, in, in my case, um, saves me having to make um, written notes on the different trigger words for the different LoRa's that I'm using. So I find this very useful. Anyway, okay, so let's take a look now how we install LoRa Info and add it to our workflow. Okay, so to install the LoRa Info node and add it to our workflow, um, quite simple. So all we need to do is come to Manager in Comfy UI, select that, select Install Custom Nodes, and then in the search bar, if we type LoRa Info, press Return, it's going to take us straight to the LoRa that we need. You can see here that I've already got it. Um, installed but that's all you need to do um, worth noting here that this node shows LoRa information from Civit AI so if you've downloaded LoRa's from other locations it may not work I don't know but uh, that's worth noting and this particular LoRa was created by the author Jit Coder okay so you need to install that let me just close that and close this once you've installed that, you may need to restart your uh, Comfy UI. And once you come back to your workflow uh, to add the node, then all we need to do is um, what well, I would double left double click. And in the search bar, I would type in LoRa Info. And you can see it's already starting. It's already come up down there. Select that. And there we have it. So that's all there is to that. And then it's ready to go. You select your LoRa and press the view uh, prompt and we're done. So easy peasy. Let's just get rid of that now. And let's move on. Okay, so I think, I think we're about ready to um, generate an image now. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, first of all, I'm going to deactivate the second LoRa, which is the colorful triangles for now. Uh, let's bypass that. So hopefully we're just going to generate an image using this prompt. This prompt, details in this prompt relate to the Geisha LoRa and I took it from one of their examples. So this is where I got this particular prompt from. And we can see at the top here, that it's got the LoRa trigger word, which is FF Lix Geisha, which, and if we look at the LoRa info uh, node down here, which are previously run, we can see that that is the trigger word. So we're good to go on that. So let's try generating this uh, one LoRa with the text prompt and see what we get. So here we go. This may take a little while on my machine to um, finish off. So um, I will pause this and come back when we are finished. So our image is, is now ready. Let's just take a quick look on it. If I right click on the image and I'm just going to open up in the browser, select open image. 
and there we go so that's what we've got thus far so let's come back to our workflow and what i want to do now is i want to reactivate the second laura so select bypass there we go so that's now live again and what i will need to do is add the trigger word into the prompt for this second laura so i know that the trigger word is mad triangles and i also know that it helps when using this trigger word on this particular laura to specify what it is you want it applied to otherwise it can sometimes just go a bit nuts and try and apply it to everything so what i'm going to do is after the trigger word for the geisha up here in the prompt i'm going to add that word the trigger word and say kimono so i'm hoping it will apply it mostly to the kimono but i suspect maybe not exclusively k i m o n o comma so it's mad underscore triangles kimono is what i'm hoping will work so let's just check this everything else is fine yep so both lauras are active so i'm hoping for a, a similar ish image to this but with now with triangles added to it if this works so let's see how we go and the second image is now ready so let's take a a quick look at that and thankfully we can see we'll see we, we we do have the geisha elements and we have the the colorful triangles so so that bit has worked that's super but um having said that that's not really what this demo has been about it's been about this um lore info node and the um the usefulness of this really saves me having to either look up my notes to um, find the base database the base models or the trigger words or it um, or if I don't do that I might have to go to Civit AI and try and locate the LoRa's to get the trigger words and the base model details so all in all I find this a very useful um, node I could just have one of them and then I could just then minimize that so it's taking up no space at all in my workflow if I wanted to but um, at the moment, this layout seems to suit me fine. So um, yeah, I think that's about it. So I'll uh, I'll just say thank you very much uh, for your time. I hope you found this useful, and goodbye.